All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell Inspiron 5575. So first we're going to be using a JS1 or PH1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And I believe these three actually stay attached to the cover. So if they don't come out, don't worry, that's normal. Okay. Uh, the rest you want to keep in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Apparently, there are different models of this 5575. I did one like three years ago or something, and that one didn't have a CD drive. So this one you want to be careful because you do need to slide out the CD drive before um, pulling the bottom cover off. All right, and we're opening this up because it's running super slow and the hard drive is showing signs of um, failure. So we're going to be replacing that with an SSD. The customer doesn't really... Um, put much on it. They said they just use it for zoom uh, So we're putting a small 240 gig SSD and then we're just going to install windows on it All right, so now that we got all the screws out if you're wondering all the screws down here are um, Bigger and longer um, and then the two over here are shorter and skinnier All right, anyways once we've removed all those screws you're going to go here and pull the CD drive out I just run my fingernail up and down there as I kind of pull it and there you go There's the optical disk drive looks like that um, this looks like one of the thinner ones, so if you wanted to replace this, place this with another hard drive caddy or something, they do have uh, hard drive adapters, and you can replace that. Um, I believe it's like a 9.5 millimeter or something, or 9.7, I don't know. Um, anyways, there's two screws here. We're going to pop those out. Okay, um, and if you're wondering, the thicker one I think is about a 12 um, millimeter or so. This one's like about 9 millimeter or something. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and now pop this uh, bottom cover off. So the way I do that is I get in here, I get my fingernails in the little gap here, okay? And what we're gonna do is while I'm doing that, I'm gonna push with my thumbs on the bottom and we should be able to pop this out. Let's see, yep, there you go. And just go like that, working your way around. Okay, if you don't have fingernails to do that, I mean, you can let them grow or um, you can try using some pry tools, but I find that using my fingernails and then pushing with my thumbs works the best And that's why I do this method. All right, you can see we already got pretty much all the front and that side out We've got to now do this side you want to be a little bit careful with this side because you have these So the way these brackets work usually is you push this inwards as you kind of lift. Let's see Okay, so I'm pushing down with my thumb on the inside part um, Like in here not on this plastic bar and then I'm pulling up with my fingernails here, okay? And we're also pulling this bracket. Um, actually, it would help to pull this outwards because there's actually the clips on here that slide under the clips uh, or whatever those things are. <laughs> all right, so now we got all of that. The front, you can see we can kind of lift and wiggle this. Um, we're gonna rotate this and then let's see if we can get under here, okay? And now that we kind of got a portion, I'm gonna grab here, not this little bar, and let's see if I can wiggle it side to side as I kind of pull up. Sometimes that can release the clips there, but it looks like in this case, they don't want to come out. So we're probably just going to have to lift it straight up and it will probably release. Um, but okay, you can see like this side doesn't want to pop out on. Oh, I guess that works. Okay, I'm pulling up here and pushing with my palm to basically roll it up. And that undid the clips. There we go. We got the bottom cover off. You can see. Okay, and then the screws under here, they don't actually have washers or anything. It's just the, the way they thread it is there's the uh, no threads towards the top of the screw and then all the threads are at the bottom and that's how it kind of catches. Okay, inside the laptop, it's super clean. There's actually a slot for uh, SSD, which I'm not sure if it's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD or an M.2 SATA SSD. But um, most likely when they have a hard drive like this, it's going to support PCIe NVMe, but I don't want to just assume. So if you're going to try it, make sure that you're able to return it. All right, anyways, we're going to pull these two tabs to the side, and then the stick of RAM comes up like that. This is a 4 gig PC4 2400T. You should be able to upgrade to any PC4 2400T RAM. So if you want, you can probably even put two 16 gig sticks to get 32 gigs total. All right, um, I'm just going to quickly show what components are in here. Um, but we're not going to actually be taking everything out. All right. Um, let's get a thumbnail real quick. OK, 
Okay, so that'll be the thumbnail, and then I'm gonna just show you guys what's in here. Um, if you're gonna mess with the screen cable or anything, it's very important that you disconnect the battery first, and then press and hold the power button. Again, I'm not gonna be pulling everything out, but I'm just gonna be showing what's in here. Battery model is WDX0R. Again, I do have a playlist with all these different laptops, Dell laptops and stuff, so if you wanna find one similar that I took apart, um, I do have a whole bunch of other videos. This is LCD LVDS connector here with a little flip latch. Again, if you're gonna mess with this, disconnect the battery, open the laptop, press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. Okay, you got the battery connector here. Usually it's not a good idea to open and close the laptop too much um, with the bottom cover off because now you don't have all these screws holding the hinge. You only have the one screw there and the chance you can break the computer is a lot higher. Um, so it might be, hmm, if you disconnect the battery to work on the screen cable, you might want to um, help pull this hinge. This one has three screws, so it's a bit stronger. But um, yeah, so you got that. Uh, what else? There's this little cable going to that power button thing. All right, uh, FP. So this, does this have fingerprint? I'm gonna carefully open this up just to double check. All right, again, you wanna be careful here. All right, I'm gonna help hold this and, oh yeah, it does have the fingerprint reader. Okay, so there's the small fingerprint control board here. Okay, there's two. One goes underneath the motherboard and one's on top. Um, I'm not sure exactly which is which, but one's for the power button and one's for the fingerprint reader. Um, I can't tell because the, all this is on top of it. You got the fan, fan connectors right there, CPU is under here, soldered to the motherboard. There's the heat sink. If you take these screws out and remove this, you do want to redo the thermal paste. Okay, two slots for RAM, if you didn't already notice. All right, you got the DC jack charge port connector here, um, and it's underneath the hinge, so if you need to replace that, you do need to undo the hinge screws and then lift it up slightly to be able to get that out. Uh, again, wireless card, all right. All these ports are soldered. You got, again, an M.2 uh, SSD slot. Uh, speakers connected here, and then it has a wire running along here to the other speaker. You got the um, CMOS, BIOS, RTC, real-time clock battery here, CR2032. To remove that, you just push it inwards and then you can pop it up. All right, also this USB port and the SD card slot are part of this board, which has a cable running along. Um, I'm not 100% sure where it's going to, but it looks like right here underneath this cable. Yep, all right. Then you got this little cable, which just says JFP, huh? JFP1, is there another fingerprint thing? Or front panel, I don't know. Anyways, uh, JHDD1, so this is going to the hard drive. Um, this again, the battery connector. This is the JTP1, so touchpad, trackpad, keyboard backlight connector, keyboard connector. All right, and yeah, I don't know what that small JFP one is for. We're gonna be removing the hard drive. Um, if I didn't already mention, the battery is WDX0R. I'm pretty sure I did. But yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing out. I haven't slept at all today, and I think it's like already past 6 a.m., so. Yeah, I don't know. Probably gonna die early, but. <laughs> all right, let's get all these screws out. Okay, we still have one more computer to fix after this one, and this one's gonna take about two hours with the Windows install. All right, after you get all those screws out, you can lift this up. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit here for you guys. Okay, the CD drive's in my way. Okay, we'll zoom in a little bit, not too much. All right, so now we can lift this up. And you want to be careful because there is a cable running along underneath. So what I like to do is I like to pull on this. And then when you pull on it, you can actually form a gap there. Um, it helps to kind of have fingernails because then you have multiple that you can see. I can get my fingernail in there and I can use that to help pull this connector back. And then while I'm holding that, you can pull this. And there you go. Here's the hard drive. Okay. And now we're gonna transfer this bracket over to the SSD. Again, we have a 240 gig SSD. Right now the Lexar ones are pretty good price and also they're good quality. So let's get these four screws out from the side of this little bracket. Also, if you didn't have a hard drive in here, this has four little holes to hold those screws in. Um, or if you wanted to put the SSD on the other slot there, um, then you can actually put the screws into this little caddy 
and store this back in there. All right, so now that we got all those screws out, we're gonna let this drop down. Okay, set that aside. Get the SSD in there. And then put these screws back in. Make sure that you do have the um, bracket lined up properly. You do want the clear side facing up and then you do want the bigger one going up towards the optical disk drive slot. Oh, I didn't mention that. The optical disk drive slot and motherboard, um, or it's connected to the motherboard with this cable here. And these slots have this like pull up mechanism. Kind of interesting. Um, not too many computers use that. There are a few, um, but yeah, not too many of them use that. Also, the other one I worked on, I did a keyboard replacement video. That one was a huge pain. Um, but if you wanted to see that, again, I did make that video about three years ago. And yeah, that one was a huge pain. All right, anyways, we're gonna get this back in. So get this lined up with the connector here. Okay, line it up. Um, for this, it might be easier if you actually take the battery out, but I'm gonna do it, try and do it this way. Okay, once we get that all lined up, you can go ahead and hold this connector in place and push that. It's better to push the drive in place, so that way, again, you don't yank the cable out. But there we go, and we'll drop this down. Make sure it's all lined up, looks good. Get the four screws back in. Pretty simple, straightforward to install the hard drive or SSD. And then if you wanna boot from an external boot device, you press F12. We're gonna be, again, installing, uh, I didn't, actually I didn't mention, but we're gonna be installing Windows 10 on here. All right, and we're gonna just do a clean install, update all the drivers, everything. And yeah, that's not gonna be part of the video, but that's what we're doing with this. The other option you can do is you can actually clone the whole, um, the old hard drive over if your old hard drive is working okay. Um, but yeah, we're going to be, again, just upgrading this drive and doing a clean install so everything runs better. All right, so we got that. We're going to now get the bottom cover, line this back up. Okay. Click it all back down into place. Okay, click that back down as well. We're gonna have to go from the other side to help click this all back in, but for now, make sure those three clips are in. We can get the two screws that were hidden under the um, CD drive back in there as well. Okay, now that we got those two screws in, let's go ahead and get the optical disk drive or CD drive back on. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and tighten these screws down. I like to twist them backwards to hear them click that way. I know for sure that they're in the proper place. Okay, and then tighten it down. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. But other than that, um, you're welcome to stay as I get these last few screws in. But that's pretty much it. Um, some people like to see that the computer still turns on, so I'll turn it on for you after this. And yeah, might have to plug it in. Um, but yeah, this one has a separate CMOS BIOS battery and we didn't disconnect any of the batteries, so um, in this case, it should start up okay. All right, the clips are actually clipping themselves in as I put these screws in. Um, we do want to check all around the edges to make sure everything is clicked in. You can see it's clipping in some more. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look now. Flip this over. Okay, looks like, oh, we missed one clip here. So make sure to clip all of that in. All right, again, I have a Windows 10 USB installer that we're gonna be using. So let's go ahead and grab that. All right, I'm gonna plug it in here. They also have their wireless USB mouse thing. I'm gonna just plug that back in. Oh, we missed a clip. There we go. Okay. All right, let's power this on. And we're just gonna be pressing F12. Right, screen's powering up. 
can see F12 and you can see it says boot options down there we're gonna boot from the USB Sandus Cruiser fit here okay and now we got the Windows 10 installer and we're just gonna install Windows 10 all right that's pretty much it again thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one let's drop this bye